Yo, what up guys? Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about what it's like to really be a DP for a music video shoot. Let's get into it. So for starters, let me just explain what a DP is. Typically in like the music video realm, the low budget music video realm anyways, you yourself are just a video creator because you do everything. If you don't have a team, you kind of play every single part that is possible for a music video. So you're the DP, you're the producer, you're the director, you're pretty much everything. But if you do have an opportunity to build a team, you might find yourself kind of reaching out and finding different moving parts to assemble a relevant music video production team. And a DP would be one of these positions within this music video team. Typically known as a DP, maybe even a cinematographer, it's kind of all over the place, there's so many different names, but essentially a DP is just a person who's operating the camera for the director. A couple weeks ago, myself, I had an opportunity to do some DP work for another director. This isn't something that I do, you guys know that. I'm usually the person who's handling pretty much everything on my music video set, but I decided to do this to kind of get out of my comfort zone and do something different. I wanted to try some new things, I wanted to see what it was like, I wanted to try to work cohesively with somebody else on a project and this is what we came with. So for starters, if you haven't seen the music video that I'm gonna be talking about today, make sure you guys go check it out. I'm gonna link it up above one of these corners. Just dropped today with this video. So this is gonna be like a full spoiler alert. So if you wanna see that video before you check this one out, make sure you come back here after that. Also, I forgot to mention that, uh, yeah, if you drop a comment down in the comment section, you will have an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video. So just go down there, drop a comment, a question. Uh, you can say, what's up? You can ask me how my day is going. You can ask me what's your favorite camera, anything. Just drop a comment down below. You have an opportunity for a shout out at the end of my next video. But let's get into it. So this video concept came about from the director, Ty Cooper. Now Ty Cooper is primarily into short films, but he wanted to get into the music video thing. He had a concept and he was looking for a cinematographer, a DP to put it together for him. So he reached out to me. And this is what we came up with. So this video is for King Gemini. The overall concept of this video is a guy who's been in the game of like drugs, I guess you can say. Uh, he's been in and out doing some things and he just wants out of the game. So this is his attempt at getting out of the game. Within this attempt, some things go wrong, some things go south, and you'll see that in the entire music video. So we're about to go over a scene breakdown. I'm also gonna tell you guys how I felt tackling this video. Certain things that I wouldn't do, certain things that I thought were really cool and that I learned from this experience. So for starters, the first couple of scenes that we were getting were the interior shots. So for the interior shots, the general concept of what's going on is King Gemini's in the house. He's going to pick up the bags that he's going to be passing off and trying to get out the game with. He has his mom there. He thinks that his mom does not know that he's into drugs. So they have this big, huge conflict, this confrontation. He's going out of the house and uh, he's going to be taking the drugs to uh, give them over to the pastor uh, in the video. So this is the interior shot. Uh, and we pretty much shot this as simple as possible. I'm using a Sony a7 III. I'm using a Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 and we're just going completely handheld with this. And the main reason that we're going handheld for this is we kind of want to introduce some rocky shots to this. We want you guys to show that this is a uh, rocky situation between him and his mom and we want that raw feeling to it. So we just went with handheld and we also were kind of in a crunch for time. So we ended up running through this scene a couple of times just to grab a couple of different angles and uh, we just used the interior lighting that was there. We didn't add any external lights. We just wanted it to be raw and have that feeling. Plus the a7 III is just amazing in low light also. So yeah, that's the interior breakdown. From there, we come to the exterior shots uh, with King Gemini coming out of the house to hand the bags off to his girl, get into the Porsche and leave. And we pretty much shot this on this exact same setup. Now the difference between these shots and the interior shots is that these were shot on a tripod. Uh, director's choice. Like I don't really have any like logical reasoning to why we shot it on a tripod, just director's choice. And yeah, it was pretty simple. We used the same setup, the Sigma 35 on the a7 III. And yeah, that was pretty much it. So this next notable scene that we're gonna be taking a look at is King Gemini and, and this girl pulling up to the church to hand the bags off to the pastor. Now this setup and what we used to film this was pretty much the exact same setup, Sigma 35 millimeter. Uh, with the Sony a7 III, but we decided to add an Arona for these shots just to give it a smooth vibe. And uh, the fact that he was gonna be walking, we didn't wanna have it be like a like a, like an intense scene. So we used the Ronin. And it was pretty simple. We used a reflector to kind of get the light on him through the actual car window. And then we just used all natural lighting for the shots of him exiting the car and going up into the church. The next notable scene that we're gonna be taking a look at is King Gemini entering the church. Now this scene was kind of difficult for me to figure out. I had went to scout this location a couple of days before. And the first thing that I noticed when I was looking at this location was that it was huge and it was dark. Those are two bad things. We don't have a lot of light. You don't have a lot of money. So my biggest problem with the scene was figuring out how I was gonna light this entire scene with minimal lights. And honestly, I only use one light to light this entire scene. This is a technique that I figured out from my homie Cooper Films, just from learning 
and looking at what he does and how he like lights scenes uh, with not a lot of money and not a lot of equipment. So this is a really dope technique. Make sure you guys pay attention and actually use this. So the one light that I used to light this entire scene was the Aperture 120D Mark II. I think my biggest problem with trying to light this scene was the difference between color temperatures. Like the majority of the lights that were in this scene were tungsten and the Aperture 120D is a daylight temperature light. So that was just me going into uh, my Kelvin adjustments and getting this as close as possible and trying to figure it out in post on how I would adjust the colors to keep the warm vibe to the actual video, but not make the light look super blue. So it was just a balance in that. The technique that I used to light this entire room with one light is just literally took every single modifier off of the light dome and just shined it up against the wall and let that light that's bouncing back light the entire space. That was all we did. It's a really simple but effective technique to light up a big space. The lighting that came off the wall was soft, it was even, it wasn't narrow, and that was how we lit this entire scene. The equipment that I used to film the majority of these shots was the Sigma 35, the A7 III, and the Ronin. We pretty much used the exact same setup for this entire video. I think we switched lenses once. But yeah, we pretty much used the exact same setup for this entire video. The next notable scene that you guys will see in this video is the scene of King Jim and I talking to the pastor. Now they have like a deep, dark conversation in a confessional type setting um, where they're speaking to each other through this mesh material. You know how it is in churches. So we tried to set that up. Uh, and the only thing that we used for lighting for this particular setup was Aperture LS1 LED panel. We kind of set it to low. We wanted it to have that really dark vibe so we really didn't want to have it super bright. And I think it worked out for the majority of those shots. The next shot that you guys are gonna see in this video frame-wise is King Jim and I passing the bags off to the pastor in the video. And this was an interesting scene because the light play and the way that the lights were set up in this scene actually just, uh, they just worked out in my favor. So the lights that were set up in the foreground were more of like a daylight tone um, light and then the light in the back was a tungsten. So when you have those mixtures between two different light temperatures, it's very easy for you to create some color contrast between the scene. What I did was I adjusted the white balance in the shot to a tungsten and that in turn made the foreground lighting look very cool. It just had a very dark cinematic vibe to it uh, and it just worked out really well for us in that shot. So that's pretty much the cinema breakdown with this video. All lens choices, equipment choices, uh, stabilizer choices were really all up to the director. I was just solely there to shoot this uh, and give him what he wanted. And this is kind of what I want to talk about. Just being a sole DP, not being a director and kind of just providing what someone needs for a project. What is it actually like? Uh, for me, it's 50-50. It's I enjoyed a lot of it because I don't really do too many like super story technical videos. So I learned a little bit about blocking and certain uh, ways to shoot certain things. But at the same time, like being in the music video space, it was certain things that I just personally wouldn't do in terms of the way something is shot. Like typically with cinema, a lot of the times what carries you and what keeps you interested throughout the video is just like, narration, uh, dialogue, people actually talking. And I know that in a music video, it's very minimal talking, if any. So you kind of have to lead somebody through a story without sound, without someone physically saying a word. I think the overall movement within a music video shot can tell a lot about what's going on in the shot. Like with the first couple of scenes that we shot in the interior, like those two were arguing and the fact that we shot that handheld at Rocky kind of helped intensify and help the viewer really know that, all right, they're having a confrontational moment here. Whereas with some of the tripod shots, if you don't have dialogue, it's kind of hard for you to feel the feeling of what's going on in certain shots. So for me, I like movement, like not random movement, obviously you want movement that's motivated, but for the majority of the shots that I do for music videos, I just like to add movement because just having a still shot with music just isn't that interesting most of the time. So if you're going to be in a DP work, you got to release yourself from the project. One, you got to be good at taking direction and you also have to be cool with not having what you would do for a project be present into the actual project. So there it is, guys. I just wanted to let you guys know from my perspective what it's like being a DP for a music video project. Make sure you guys check out the music video. Like I said, this isn't my sole project. This is the work of director Ty Cooper. I'm just there doing the cinematography and doing the DP work. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. Let me know what you guys loved about it, certain things that you didn't like about it, certain things that you would do different. Uh, make sure you guys drop a comment in the comment section regardless for an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video. Let's get into some questions from my last video before we get up out of here. All right, so first comment comes in from Royal Z Production. He says, man, make a video on where to start with passive income as a freelance filmmaker. Love your content, bro. Appreciate you, man. Make sure you guys check out his channel as well. He got some really dope music video stuff coming out. Lots of tutorials, lots of BTS and stuff like that. Check out the homie, man. I checked out his channel, it's really dope. But 
If you guys would like a video on passive income as a filmmaker, music video director, just overall videographer, let me know down in the comments. I'll try to make that one of my next uploads if so. The next comment is from Jonathan Rivera, and they say, love your videos, bro. They've helped me so much. Keep up the great content. Now, it was a lot of comments like this. This was a really engaging video. I'll drop a couple like right here of other people who gave comments within the same realm as that one. I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate the comments, although I can't get to every single one of you guys' comments. I do appreciate you guys for dropping them. Um, yeah, man, really do appreciate it. The next comment is from Alexander Fresco Music. They say, on average, how long does it take you to edit music videos or vlogs? Love your videos, man. This is an interesting question because music video concepts and overall like uh, plots are different. Some are very easy. Some are very complex, they take a lot more editing time, but I would say on average, I can realistically lock out a simple music video in a couple of hours. Like, as long as I'm sitting there and I'm focused and I have everything organized with my footage and my B-roll, it's really a simple task. It's just me sitting down and tackling it and turning my phone to airplane mode and not getting on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, honestly, I would say anywhere from like four to five hours uh, with color grade, effects, export, everything included. Five hours at maximum on a simple music video edit. But for my vlogs, man, my vlogs have honestly just been getting longer and longer and longer with the different things that I'm doing. I'm going in and I'm trying to like color correct every single clip and then I gotta get the audio right, then I gotta get the uh, like the music transitions together. They're becoming more complex and uh, honestly, they're ranging from like eight to 12 hours sometimes. So I'm kind of putting in more work on my vlogs and my music videos just because vlog footage can be all over the place and you're trying to form the sequence and get the audio right and make sure it flows well and it's engaging uh, for the viewer to watch. So uh, vlogs, man, definitely have been taking more time than music videos lately. Next comment is from Tyrone Esk. They said, where's my man Cotton? Dope video, by the way. And they said, uh, shout out to their Instagram at exquisite underscore cinematic. So make sure you guys check them out on Instagram. Um, good question, man. I honestly just picked this question because I want to shout out to my homie Cotton. Uh, good dude, man. Cotton, just been chilling, man. Trying to figure it out, man. Like I said, in my last video, I was talking about me having kind of like a dry spell in music videos and not really being that motivated to shoot them when every single one kind of becomes the same and artists want to do the same sorts of things. You kind of like, I don't want to say burnout, but you kind of lose interest in it, if that makes sense. So I think Cotton's in that same realm. I tell him all the time to get back on YouTube. You guys will see him soon, man. He's just chilling, uh, just waiting for the right time to strike. The next comment is from Mike um, Matsky. Matsky, I think that's how you say that. Uh, they say, have you ever lost any client footage? Like no backup, car failure, yikes, right? Cool video, dude. Appreciate you, man. Actually, I have. I don't know if, how many of you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a really long time. I dropped a music video a long time ago for my homie Keys. And it was like these shots of Keys walking over a bridge. And I had like this cool drone footage, like overhead of him walking down the bridge. I actually lost all that music video footage and I had to shoot it all again. And the first time I shot it, it was way more epic. It was like boats going under the freaking bridge or I was walking, it was traffic, it was just nuts. But I ended up losing all that footage. I deleted it off of a memory card on accident thinking that I backed it up and we had to shoot it again. So yeah, it sucks. I've done it before. The next comment is from King Solo Pro. Um, the last video that I did that we're taking these comments from was me talking about video misconceptions. So uh, this comment is relative to a misconception that they had for video production. So King Solo Pro says, was told that crop sensor cameras are bad. Me personally, I really enjoy using APS-C sensor to like Super 35 sensor cameras. Uh, because of the lens choices that you can get, you can purchase a lot cheaper lenses. And when using a gimbal on a full frame camera, uh, as opposed to like a Super 35 or APS-C sensor camera, it's much easier for you to lose focus on certain stabilizers, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, shallow adaptive field is easy to get on a full frame camera, but on an APS-C sensor or a Super 35 sensor camera, uh, it's harder for you to lose focus on the subject, if that makes sense. I don't know. I just feel like at times, like shallow adaptive field can be uh, an overrated thing on the camera. So that is a huge misconception. The next comment is from Nikolai Ruther. Uh, they said 502, uh, did you just went upstairs and set up the camera then went back down to go up again? They're referring to me uh, filming my sequence running up the stairs and I, yeah, man, that's the life of a vlogger, yo. You gotta like keep the person engaged through uh, certain tasks that you're doing. And it can be as stupid as you going into a room, setting up a camera, then going out of that room and acting like you just entered that room. Uh, for you guys to kind of see us enter the room. So yeah, it's completely stupid when you think about it uh, in terms of sequencing, but I don't know, it just keeps the viewer more engaged, I would like to believe. The next comment is from Darshan Garjar. 
Um, I hope I pronounced that right. If so, you got a cool ass name. But they said, I want to meet this guy. He's a freaking legend. <laughs> Yo, appreciate you, man. Next comment is from Sonny Brown. They say, uh, 229, OMFG, no. My God, no. Go back to your T2I then. They're referring to, in this video, I was talking about how cameras don't matter that much to the creative process. And I got a lot of comments like this. People talking about uh, cameras do matter. Go back to your T2I then. And I don't know, I just, I feel like whenever this is a topic, people take it out of context. People don't really see uh, what people mean when they say certain stuff like that. It's no camera on the market that will make you creative. In a creative process, a camera really doesn't matter that much. If you have a T2I and you're uncreative, if I give you a ray, you're still gonna be uncreative. Cameras really don't matter that much. It's not a camera on the market that will make you creative. Yes, a camera can do more things than another camera, but if these features aren't helping you be more creative, then that doesn't really matter that much. Like I said, it's not a camera on the market that will make you more creative. That's just how I feel about it. Yes, certain cameras do more things than others, but at the end of the day, you focusing on the things that really matter, your lighting, your story, your creativity, all those other things are much more important than the camera that you're using. And if you don't harness and possess these things, then a bigger, better camera won't make you better creatively. It's not a camera on the market that will make you creative. Next comment is from Jean Hendrik Pijiotter. I, I know I screwed your name up. <laughs> they said, what, free shout outs? Free shout out, man, shout out to you. Shout out to all y'all, man, appreciate y'all. And that's it, man, that's gonna conclude this video. Make sure you guys drop a comment down in the comment section for a chance to be featured at the end of my next video. If you guys enjoyed this video, man, make sure to drop it a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm out, guys, peace.